because our ties with Tamworth go back some 44 years, what I have announced today really strikes at the heart of this community. East West Airlines announces the shutdown of its Tamworth operations. Prime Local News with David Evans. Good evening. In other news tonight, former Maury Shire president on the critical list, extra crews are brought in to fight coastal bushfires and a health services hotline. East West Airlines will cut its ties with Tamworth by February. In a shock announcement, the airline's 220 staff were told this morning the Tamworth maintenance base will close and East West flights out of Tamworth will cease. At the East West hangar this morning, workers had their fears but were hopeful. What's the mood here today? They didn't have to wait long at 11am East West General Manager Neil Burkett called his 220 staff to the main hangar. It is uh, it's sad that you, that your worst fears will become reality. To stun silence, Mr Burkett announced the maintenance base will close. First the workshops, then the technical centre and finally the hangars. A total shutdown by February next year. The jobs of 55 administration staff who work in the so-called White House were spared for at least the next two to three years. For maintenance staff, East West will try and redeploy 50% of them, but all outside Tamworth. Did you expect to lose your job? No. <laughs> Not really, I left Qantas to come up here, bought a house and all up here and... Oh, shocked, shocked. What do you do now? It was worse than we expected, put it that way. What are you going to do now? Think about it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind betting some of the blacks making a decision, they'll have a job at the end of the day. They won't have to move their families interstate or interstate, so... Neil Burkett says Tamworth has been under review for six to nine months with a decision taken in the last two weeks. He said Tamworth no longer has the frequency of flights to maintain a base in Tamworth. The pilot strike and deregulation were cited as other reasons for closure. Just this week, East West's sister organisation, Anzia, was awarded a contract to build buses in Tamworth. Member for New England, Ian Sinclair, today described the closure as a trade-off. But later, at a press conference, Neil Burkett denied it. But there's certainly been no trade-off. Council says the vacant hangars are not suitable for manufacturing. Incumbent Mayor David John is now getting on with the job, together with the Air Transport Council, of negotiating for a new airline to service Tamworth once East West pulls out. We're not terribly surprised, but uh, regretful, obviously, and certainly not blasé about it, but determined to go on into the future and uh, continue building Tamworth brick by brick. Union officials will travel to Tamworth tomorrow to begin negotiations and East West have set up on-site financial guidance for workers. Neil Burkett said the decision had been difficult because it breaks the historical heart of the airline. But a business of the 90s can't run on emotion. The, uh, the overall savings uh, to, the, uh, to the airline are millions of dollars, yes. The widow of the founder of East West Airlines described today's announcement as very sad but inevitable. Mrs Joan Brown, wife of the late Basil Brown, says she had a premonition. Something was about to go wrong with the Tamworth operation. I, actually, yesterday I was speaking to a friend and I said I had a feeling that um, East West wouldn't be there too much longer. Joan Brown in recent years has continued to represent her late husband Basil at East West functions, functions like the airline's 40th birthday in Sydney. Basil Brown was the founder of East West Airlines. He purchased an Avro Anson, now on display at Tamworth Airport, to commence East West services in 1947. And it was named by my husband East West when it was going north and south. That was the dream and it finally came about that it did go East West and it went many other places too. The operation in Tamworth has certainly gone west now. Mrs Brown, who now lives in Port Macquarie, says today's announcement was inevitable, considering the way the airline industry has been heading. That's not to say it didn't come as a shock. It's a very sad day. <laughs> I can't help, you know, mind going back to the beginning of things. The foundation of it was a country airline for the people of the country, built in the country, uh, operated by country people, and with the money, country people sort of financed it.
Mrs Brown was a non-paying passenger on the company's first flight in June 1947. During the first year of operations, East West employed 33 people and carried 7,632 passengers. The wife of one of Australia's lesser-known pioneer aviators will always have a soft spot for the airline despite losing its country connection. I always felt at home <laughs> when I entered one of their aircrafts. I thought, this is ours. This is our airline, line, and, um, and I know that the um, people of, of Tamworth must be feeling the same today because they were the ones that got behind it to start the whole thing, you know. The East-West connection with Tamworth dates back 44 years. For 35 years, the airline was controlled by local people and it was not until 1982 that there was a threat to Tamworth's role as East-West headquarters. Nine years ago, former ANSET executive Brian Gray, now head of Compass Airlines, made a takeover bid for East West. It came as no surprise after the airline's unsuccessful attempted at expansion into the Northern Territory. Gray convinced shareholders to sell during an explosive period which saw long-standing chief executive John G. Riley depart. The new chief executive then gave the first of what was to be many assurances from many people that Tamworth would remain the airline's home. But we could see a lot, of, a lot of extra activity at Tamworth and it would enhance the job opportunities of all the employees, whether they're pilots, engineers, clerical staff, reservation staff, everyone would benefit from the whole operation. At the naming of an aircraft after the airline's inaugural chairman, Mr Don Shand, Mr Gray repeated the assurance, much to the delight of the Mayor, David John. Through the uh, benefit of, of being the operations centre of, of the east-west operation, uh, has been a wonderful benefit to the city. East West passed into the hands of the Perth-based group Skywest Holdings just 16 months later and there were more assurances about Tamworth's future. In 1987 the airline was involved in another two takeovers in just 10 days and became the property of the TNT and News Corporation group. Sir Peter Abels came to Tamworth to reaffirm the city's importance to the airline and a year later those assurances were still being given. We're going to establish Tamworth as our major base for targeting all of the Fokker aircraft uh, in Australia. It'll involve the extension of one of our hangars here uh, and continued development of the Tamworth base. Now the only connection the airline will have with the city in which it was founded will be a revenue account section. And Mr Alex Shand, a nephew of one of the founders, remains as chairman of the board. That's all we have in Prime Local News. Now it's time for Roger Clemson with 7 Nightly News. Airline jobs go in the first casualty of deregulation. Evacuations in a Sydney bushfire emergency. And Yugoslavia on the brink of war. Good evening. Just 48 hours after winning a multi-million dollar government bus project, the TNT Group has rocked Tamworth with news that over 200 jobs will be axed at its east-west operation. At the same time, East West plans to abandon its operations base at Tamworth. East West has been part of Tamworth for 44 years. Today's parting of the ways is a bitter blow for the town. The 220 workers who lose their jobs were called together to hear this. It is uh, it's sad that it's your worst fears will become a reality. Their reaction... Oh, shocked. Shocked. It was worse than we expected. It's a massive restructuring of the airline brought on by the cutthroat competition of deregulation. ANSET will now take over everything from ticketing to aircraft maintenance. Today's move comes a day after another ANSET subsidiary was chosen to build new government buses in Tamworth. Was that a sweetener for the east-west closure? The powers that be within ANSET uh, probably uh, thought they had some responsibility to try and uh, soak up some of that labour that would be left over after leaving uh, east-west. With the state opposition tonight demanding a review of the bus tender, was there a deal done? And those discussions, uh, as I understand it from, uh, from the Minister, have taken place at ministerial level, but there's certainly been no trade-off. From October, East West will concentrate its services right up the east coast of Australia, from Hobart through to Cairns. It'll strengthen its position in the holiday market, leaving those left behind inland trying to make the best of a bad situation regretful obviously and certainly not blasé about it but determined to go on into the future and uh, continue building town with brick by brick lee hatcher seven nightly news and that's seven nightly news for this wednesday the 18th of september roger clemson good night <laughs>